Hey, how's it going folks? Today I'm going to show you how you can add refrigerant to your car's AC system, but not just that, I'm also going to show you how you can find leaks in your AC system as well. So first thing you need obviously is a can of refrigerant. I got this for about $22 at uh, O'Reilly's Auto Parts here in the States. Now if you're going to be topping off the refrigerant in your system, it's very important you buy one of these that comes with a gauge like this, because this is going to tell you when to stop adding refrigerant because if you add too much refrigerant to the system, you could potentially damage some components of your AC system. Now if you're having to top off the refrigerant in your system or even fill the, fill the system completely back up, it's probably due to a leak. Now if you want to be able to find that leak, I suggest you buy a refrigerant can that comes with UV dye. This dye will allow you to find that leak a lot easier and you don't have to necessarily buy two separate cans. I have this from before so I'm going to use it. You can just buy one of the larger cans that has some UV dye in it. Alright, so next we'll need to go over to the engine bay. I need to find two things. First, the low pressure side and the fitting that goes over that line and second, your AC compressor. So your AC pressure lines look like this. So you're going to have a low side and a high side. And on each line, you're going to have a fitting like this. There's usually going to be a plastic cap on them that says either H for high or L for low. But if you don't see that plastic cap on them telling you which one is which, don't worry. The high pressure side is going to be the thinner line. So for example, this is the high pressure line on this car's AC system. And again, this is the low pressure line on this car's AC system. See how much bigger this one is compared to that one? And then if you just follow either of these lines, they'll go to your AC compressor. And here's a look at our AC compressor. This front part is our AC compressor clutch. And where the belt is going over, that's your AC compressor pulley. Also, I've only removed the air filter box so I can show you the AC compressor. You don't have to usually remove anything to be able to find the AC compressor on your car. All right, now if you're going to be filling up a completely empty system, you should go by weight. Uh, there's going to be a sticker on your car, which in our case is here. And this sticker is going to tell you exactly how much refrigerant you should add. And for this car, it says 0.9 pounds, which is about 15 ounces. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this can has 18 ounces, which is 3 ounces more than what we would need if we were going to completely refill an empty system, AC system on this car. So if that's the case, you should use a little scale like this. And as you can see, this can plus the refrigerant weighs about one pound and six and a half ounces. And then once you start adding refrigerant to the system, you can take breaks and measure the weight of the can and the refrigerant. And once you've added 15 ounces, you can stop. All right, next what you want to do is to, if you have any, get some Teflon tape on these threads so that it doesn't leak past these threads when you put your uh, dial gauge on here. And next, simply remove this cap and then screw on your gauge. And then you're going to install your quick connect coupler. And basically this is how you install your quick connect coupler. You basically pull on this piece, pull up, you put on your pressure port, let go, that locks it in place, and then you pull on this a little bit to make sure it's secured, and that's all there is to it. Alright, next it's time to get in our car, turn the engine on, and then turn the AC on. But since you may not be able to hear me with the car running, I'll quickly explain to you what the plan is, but I'll also explain it to you as I'm doing it on the car as well. Basically. After we turn the AC on, we're going to come back here with the engine running and the AC on. We're going to check our AC compressor. We're going to see whether the clutch is engaged or not. Again, here's our AC compressor. And that front piece is your AC compressor clutch. That's your pulley. If, you, if the car is running and this belt is turning that pulley, but this front piece is standing still, that means your AC compressor clutch is not engaged. But if that's spinning with the pulley, that means your AC compressor clutch is engaged. And that's important because Unless the AC compressor clutch is engaged, then the dial on this gauge, the number it points to, they don't mean anything. The AC compressor clutch has to be engaged for this dial to be accurate. So if you come back here after the car is started and the AC compressor clutch is engaged, you want to get the readings off this uh, with the, when the AC compressor clutch is engaged and running. And if it says that it's uh, in the cool area or maybe a little towards the lower side or the green area, on this gauge, then you want to start adding little by little, but if it's past the cool area and you're still not getting uh, cold air coming out of your air vents, you want to stop, you don't want to overfill the system because your problem could potentially be with some other components of your AC system and not just uh, you being low on refrigerant. Now if you turn on the car and turn the AC and come back here and the clutch is not engaged, well in that case you're gonna, you can start adding refrigerant little by little. Uh, maybe add for 10 seconds, then wait a few minutes, see the clutch if the clutch engages or not, then add a little bit more, wait a few more minutes and go from there. Now if the clutch is not engaging due to low refrigerant in the system, it should engage, start engaging after you add 5-6 ounces. So maybe after 2-10 ten, 
15 seconds in intervals of adding refrigerant, you should see it start kicking, kicking in. But uh, you want to keep that in mind because, again, it could be due to other reasons why it's not engaging, so you don't want to add too much refrigerant. Also, when you're adding refrigerant, if it's completely empty, you'll feel the refrigerant going a lot quicker than, let's say, if it's half empty or maybe even full and your problem with your AC system is something else and not related to low refrigerant. All right, so let's get to it. There's the car. Let's turn on our AC. Put the fan on max and on maximum cool. All right, so here's a look at our AC compressor. And as you can see, our AC compressor clutch is not engaged. So we're gonna add refrigerant for about 15 seconds. And you can also shake this. That will uh, sometimes help the refrigerant going easier. All right, so that's 15 seconds. Now we're just gonna wait a couple minutes. All right, so it's been a couple minutes and the compressor clutch is still not engaged. So we're gonna add some more refrigerant. Oh, uh, here we go. The clutch just kicked in. All right, so as you can see on our second run, we were able to get the AC compressor clutch to engage. All right, now with the compressor clutch engaged, we're gonna start adding by pay paying attention to this dial gauge. But as you can see, we're already in the filled area. The blue area is the filled area in this gauge, but we're still not getting cold air coming out of your air vents. And we're just basically gonna start adding a little bit more uh, because this gauge is not exactly always accurate. So we're gonna add a little bit more uh, maybe for five seconds intervals and then check the air that's coming out of your air vents and it should get colder as we add a little bit more here also i should mention that you should resist the urge of turning this on its head if the, it's, the refrigerant is low in this can you don't want to add the refrigerant in its liquid state as it is inside the can you want to add it like this for as it turns to gas as it moves up this can and enters your ac system it's a lot safer for your ac compressor all right, now I'm actually going to switch over to this one with the UV dye in it to top this off and finish uh, adding refrigerant to the system. Because if the refrigerant leaks out of the system in a day, <laughs> I want to be able to find that leak. And ladies and gentlemen, we were finally able to get some nice cold air coming out of these air vents. Awesome. All right, so now we have nice cold air again. So that's nice. And it feels like it took a little bit more than half of this to get there. So you want to keep that in mind. And most of this was added after the AC compressor clutch engaged, so that's something you want to account for. But let's say uh, tomorrow you turn your AC on and again you're not getting cold air, or maybe it's not as cold as it was when you added the refrigerant. That's probably because you have a leak in your system, and that's because, and that's the reason why we added this guy with the UV dye in it. This is going to tell you where the leak is in the system, and if you choose to do so, you can fix it yourself. Now in order to be able to see the UV dye that's leaking out, you're going to need one of these, which is a UV light. This looks like this. And also it would help if you can get your hand on one of these. These will enhance the UV light and you'll be able to see it easier, but they're not necessary. Next you'll need to turn off the lights in your garage. And then using the UV light, you want to go around all your different AC lines, your AC compressor, your AC condenser. And if you get a leak, it will stand out like as you like you're saying here so this is our pressure port on the low side and this is where we add the uv light and we get some some of that refrigerant to splatter around but you can definitely make exactly where that refrigerant splatter around we even got some splatter on this uh, plastic housing over here by our fuse box now when looking for leaks some of the main culprits are going to be that fitting there the little valve that goes inside there uh, both on the low side and the high side, they tend to leak. These lines themselves, they could spring a leak. Uh, wherever they connect to something else, like this line where it goes to the AC compressor, and then that line that goes from the compressor to your AC condenser to your receiver dryer, there's going to be little O-rings that goes around those these lines where they hook in to some other component of your AC system, and those could always leak. Also, your AC compressor itself can spring a leak, so you want to make sure you check that as well. And that's all there is to this video. But before you go, you make sure you click on these other videos. Because if you don't click on those, I know a guy that will make you. Don't ask me how or why, I just do. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>